Hey everyone, uh, Jack Zhang, EFN Camera Mirror for Brony Can. I do apologize for um, some of the camera work coming up uh, in this panel because um, we were in a time rush. Uh, the panel started uh, without warning. We couldn't get a good angle and uh, we messed up. So please forgive us and here is Rebecca and Vincent. Um, I'd like to welcome up uh, Rebecca Shoykat, <laughs> who is, of course, um, not only Sunset Shimmer from Equestria Girls, but also the singing voice of Twilight Sparkle over everything. And we also have Vincent Tong, who's played a number of season one characters. Uh, you've got Prince Blue Blood, you've got uh, Pony Joe, also Donut Joe, um, and you've also got Flash Century from Equestria Girls. <gasps> Ooh, ah. Uh. He used to be my boyfriend. <laughs> Until you dumped me for that Twilight. Sorry. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, should I, sorry, I should say every pony. I'm new. Hello, hello. <laughs> How come Rebecca's mic is so much louder than mine? I'm projecting. Oh, there. No. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, um, how many of you is this your first convention? And oh, okay. So probably the same for pony conventions. Uh, okay. So I have a couple random questions for these guys, and then what we're going to do is just open it up to audience questions. So um, anything you ask, as long as it's you know reasonable, and I'll go over all of that stuff later. Um, so, first of all, I guess, how was your trip all the way to Vancouver? <laughs> Tiring. I'm exhausted. I live in Richmond. <laughs> uh, so, as some of you may know, um, Studio DHX, which produces the show, as well as a lot of the VAs, are currently residing here. So, it's very convenient to get some of them for this convention. And, uh, as I mentioned, these two, this is their first con, so, so please um, welcome, their, uh, welcome them kindly. <laughs> Okay, so now for the ridiculously boring questions that everyone gets asked at the start. Um, so uh, I guess what I want uh, to start off with is how did you make it into MLP? Mm. I was actually doing some, uh, some demo singing for Daniel on the musicians union side of things. Sorry, I'll lean in because it sounds like I might be feeding back a bit. Um, so I, I started doing the singing. Um, just singing some of the, the songs because I'm a singer around town and uh, Daniel brought me in to do some, some demo stuff for things like Martha Speaks. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show. And uh, yeah, so then I, then I got a job kind of out of that. It's kind of like auditioning. Mm -hmm. um, I, my first character was, was uh, Prince Blue Blood. And I was like, whoa, my little pony is still going on? Because I used to watch it as a kid. Well, not my sister did. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I did, I did as well. But uh, yeah, so I did Prince Blue Blood, which was a super fun character to do. And um, which was really great, because it was just like me and all these other female voice actors. I was like, wow, this show is amazing. And they're, they're very talented. They're very talented, that's why. And. Uh, and um, yeah, and then I did a couple of other characters. Uh, I think I did Garble the Dragon, maybe next. And uh, that was over an MP3 audition that I sent in from my house. And at first she was like, he talked like this. And then I think by the time we got into the studio, it was more like kind of like a teenage voice. And then I think they even morphed it a bit more because I was uh, sounding too much. Garble was the red one, right? He was the red one, yes. <laughs> and. Um, uh, and then I did po Pony Joe or Donut Joe, and I didn't even know I did that voice because he was sort of like a sparse one that they threw at me, and I didn't recall that until someone on Twitter was like, did you do this voice? I'm like, yeah, I think that's me. I think I, think I did. I yeah. did it too. Awesome. And Flash was fun. Flash was funny because it, uh, it was written. He's totally just you. He's written. I, I, somebody, I, somebody followed you around and wrote a script. <laughs> no. He, it was weird because the, the breakdown of the character was Flash Sentry. He's this really cool, um, really reserved, 
introverted, more of like a poet. So I sort of went in like that, kind of like a goth emo kind of kid. And they're like trying to get something out of me. And I'm like, like no, he's cooler than that. I'm like, I'm trying to be as cool as I can. <laughs> and then I just was like, oh, I did it. And I remember running into you. You were on your bike yeah. with your little one. Yeah. And I was like, how was your audition? You're like, I think, oh, yeah. I, think I, I, I said, I think You're I... You're just going to like... I think you were going to your audition or something. I was going to my audition yeah. for... It was for Sunset Shimmer. Yeah, and I, I was going to finished. my audition for Sunset Shimmer, and he just finished his audition for yeah. Flash Sentry. And I was like, yeah, I'm never going to get cast in that show. And that's what I much. said, too. So, so like, that was... <laughs> I'd written it off. I thought, no, I'm not... I haven't been in the series. I'm not going to make this role. Whatever, you know. No, here we are. And here we are. Yay! Very happy. <laughs> I got cast! Yes! <laughs> So, how many of you have seen the movie? Awesome. Wonderful. That's okay, great. so yeah, we can awesome. talk in spoiler and <laughs> everything. No spoiler alerts. Good. Okay, so um, you know, so this is your first con, and what's your initial reaction to kind of everyone and like the the feel of what's going on here? I know it's like you want like the first panel pretty much, so it's, it's sort oh, of hard to. This is awesome. I, I love the uh, love the energy. Um, every everybody who's shown up, it's so cool. I like that it's all ages and lots of stuffies, <laughs> lots of huggable things. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just getting started, so I'm looking forward to a fun weekend. Me too. Same. You guys are cool. And I'm happy I'm here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's 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 see what I've got here, um, Rebecca. So how's it feel being a princess? Um, it's nerve-wracking, to be honest. There's a lot of pressure <laughs> being a princess, but um, but I get to be her nemesis too. So it's kind of like. Yeah. So I mean, you actually played a really big role with the movie. You know, as far as like singing and doing uh, the antagonist role. That was really fun. But I was thinking like, uh oh, I hope Sunset Shimmer doesn't end up sounding like Twilight. <laughs> at all, because that would suck. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's nice because like, they finally gave you an actual like, character in the show. Like You had been singing all this time, and yeah. everyone else seemed like to pick up this random thing or that random thing, but I was wondering you know, when, oh, when you'd get like, sort of a shot, and then you were kind of like the big antagonist of this movie. So. Yeah, I was pretty surprised at how you know, huge, huge that character was in the movie, so it was, it was exciting, but um, yeah, it was a lot of work too. You know, <laughs> it's hard work being mean. <laughs> you have to pull it out from your darkest places and it's actually... You're very you know. scary in the movie. Very, so very you know not never to cross me, right? It's true. So. Well, I, do, I don't cross you in real life. <laughs> you freaked me out in the movie. It it's a scary scare character. Me. Yeah, she, she... By the end of it, it was very, very scary. Oh, God, ripping like... My vocal cords out. <laughs> was, she got pretty. She got really demony at the mm -hmm. end. So she was really scary. And when I saw the movie, oh my god, I was terrified. Like grabbing <laughs> Kathy West, like, <laughs> God, I'm like slobbering and everything. <laughs> I, I know some people were worried about the kids. <laughs> you know, seeing I, I was that. concerned. I have two two little girls, and I was concerned about whether I should actually show the movie to them. But there tough as nails, and they loved it, so that's good. <laughs> See, I, I, I mean, didn't scar them for life. <laughs> I, I guess we were already sort of getting into it, but yeah, I mean, if, um, since you both are very familiar with the movie, obviously, you know, we can keep just making comments, like, I'm sure they would like to know more of, like, what you guys think about, like, the movie, or kind of, like, the change as far as, like, getting into that alternate universe, or, like, just, do you have any particular thoughts you want to share? Um, I was really excited to see the movie, and um, recording it was really funny because we didn't we didn't record together. When I was recording, it was with all the guys, so it was with um, Snips and Snails, and and Peter New, and uh, it, was it was a boys club and a girls club. Yeah, it was, and it was really difficult to record with Peter New standing next to you because. <laughs> I was trying to, yeah, he did that. He literally was like, <laughs> looking at me. Because I was trying to, I was, I, I don't know, I had these lines that I had to sound so cool and, and ask, and ask uh, Twilight out. You know? Who read for Twilight? I think maybe the director did. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't very good. Um, he wasn't very hot. But it was, uh, yeah, it was like trying to be like, 
hey, so if you don't have a date, do you want to go to the dance? And Peter knew his face is right here, just staring at me. I'm like, <laughs> this is so hard. I was laughing so hard, and I couldn't get through it. It was, I'm, I'm actually glad that they had it one take that was decent. Well, but, did, uh, did he ever tell you about his role in Hearts and Hooves? Like, no. uh, his session with Nicole? No. Like, and, and, and if anyone hasn't heard about this, you should look up some of the other panels. Like, um, well, you, do you know the episode where um, Big Mac and too. Shirley, you know, oh, yeah. had the whole dating thing going on? Apparently, that recording session was just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they could practically not keep it together right. during that whole thing. Right. <laughs> um, so, I guess, uh, Rebecca, there was definitely a change in the style of music going from the show to the movie. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, what was that like? I mean, did you uh, appreciate it? Like, do you prefer, like, one or the other? Like, did you like kind of doing more of, like, a pop style? Uh, well, I love singing pop music, and I guess I guess you would consider maybe the show is a little bit more musical theater, but I think it's got a lot of elements of pop in it already. So I thought yeah. I thought that um, the movie really sort of you know ha was a bit more edgy, and had a bit more um, I don't know a little bit more driving beats behind it and things like that. But I I enjoyed singing both styles because, and I also thought that it was a neat it was a slight departure. Uh, stylistically, so it really sort of forwarded the the, te the teen theme of the movie a little bit. And it had some great hooks. I love the music from the movie. I was actually, it was hard to not sing those songs sort of like out in public and stuff. Like, you know, we were like, we have to sign all these non-disclosure agreements until it actually is released, right? So, um, so I was down in LA for the premiere. I was so very lucky to be down there for that at the LA Film Fest. And, uh, and they were playing the the tracks before the movie, and I was singing along because I finally got a chance to just let it out. <laughs> These are great songs. Uh, I, I heard there's actually some footage of you and Ingram floating around. Yeah, somebody filmed our uh, down in, at the LA Film Fest. It was like part of Family Day, and uh, Daniel and I did a little acoustic karaoke kind of set. It was like a family sing along, and somebody filmed the entire thing, like. No tripod, just holding and laughing, and you can hear this whoever whomever's voice it is, going, "We love you, Daniel," and things like that. And uh, posted the whole thing online, so if you want to go check it out, it's on YouTube. Wow. Yeah, and and most of the bronies and children knew the words better than I did because they were all. Most of the songs were songs I haven't even sung before because they weren't even my songs. It was just like, "Let's do the most popular pony songs," and I said, "Okay," and I had to learn them. <laughs> Let's do it. And the smile song has so many words, oh my gosh, but you guys probably know them all. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I'm sure everyone knows all of them. I don't doubt it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think Win the Crown is definitely like a new favorite for a lot of people. I, I have an outfit myself, I'm probably gonna be wearing it tomorrow. <laughs> um, I know some other people, you know, have started putting them together. Um, and yeah. Obviously, wonderful music, and uh, definitely some more stuff to sing along to. Um, so, how does you know when you're getting directed, you know, in the studio for um, voice acting or singing? Like, is there a particular difference between the two? I, I know Ingram will generally coach like the singing, at least as far as I've heard. But is there uh, any similarities or, or similarities or differences? Um, you did some singing too, didn't you? Not, not for no? My Little Pony, okay. no. no. Well, Jason Tyson is, is always in on this, or Thiessen? How is it pronounced? I don't even know, for crying out loud. Thiessen? Jason's always in, in, the, in the sessions, so he's always in the music sessions there to make sure that I'm um, right on the right track with the Twilight sound. And, um, and in, the, in the actual film, when we did... The Questry Girls, um, that was uh, Terry Clausen, so, and Daniel does the directing in the music side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, it's just, uh, they just want to get the best performance from you as possible. And that it sounds natural, there's a lot of, um, you know, because be, when, you're, when you're behind the microphone, it can sort of sometimes take away from acting with another person or feeding off of the energy of another person if you're just there in the studio all by yourself. So they want to make sure that you are sounding like, you know, your truth, that you're always sort of in touch with the feelings of the, really letting the emotions come through.
Hmm. That, did that sound vague enough for you? Because that was, sounded vague to me as I was saying it. <laughs> uh, so have you actually interacted much with Tara, you know, the speaking counterpart? Um, I just met her for the first time this past uh, in LA? June in LA, yeah. Oh, wow. LA. LA. <laughs> I've actually, my very first cartoon was called uh, Sushi Pack. And uh, Tara Strong was in that. And hmm. she came up to record a few times in Vancouver. And uh, everyone said, like, oh, that's Tara Strong, Tara Strong. I'm like, who's Tara Strong? <laughs> like, that's Tara Strong. I'm like, oh, hey, Tara, what's up? <laughs> and uh, so that was really cool when I found out, like, wow, she did stuff like, that I really love, like Family Guy and a whole bunch of other, like, um, what's that, drawn show. What's that? Yes, yeah, drawn together. My gosh, that's so funny. And uh, so yeah, that was it. Was really cool to be like, wow, she's she's a person I admire as a voice actor. So, yeah, and uh, and she also um, originated from Canada, despite moving. Um, uh, and, and yeah, she is definitely one of the few people that is on the show that is not like actually local to here. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I guess we're, while we're on the topic of music, um, I know you can sing as good as Twilight, but can you dance as good as her? <laughs> I feel, well, you should, we should ask Vincent. Can yeah, I? Yeah, I mean, I guess the question is open to either of you. Can yes, I, I can dance as well as Twilight. Thank you. <laughs> I meant, can I? Oh, can you? Uh, yeah, she breaks it down. She breaks it down. I, I don't suppose you'd like to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a do little, it. I'll just do a little table move. Okay, that's all, that's all I got. There you go. Yeah! Thank you for the beatboxing. <laughs> Vincent Tong, beatboxer. <laughs> So I, I, I sort of asked this earlier, but, uh, well, before the session, um, but what do you think of the name Brad? I, I know some of you know what I'm Brad. talking about. Brad, it's a it's a good name. I think Flash Century is a better name though. That's <laughs> um, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you were asking me if I knew about that that whole thing, and and uh, yeah, I looked it up a bit and researched the character of Brad and seen what the whole talk was about. I think Megan had said there was another name for him. I forget what it is though. Some sort of like cute bottom something. <laughs> I don't remember. You know, perhaps you can get back to us tomorrow. Maybe, yeah. Because these, these guys Googling. will be coming back tomorrow for the, the um, very long uh, <laughs> VA panel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess, you know, you brought up a little bit of your other work. Um, is there anything in particular you'd like to, like any sort of big Shameless roles? plugs? Yes. <laughs> Shameless box. Anything you might be working on that hasn't come out yet that you can talk about? Um, well, I just uh, did this project that I'm really proud of and very excited about. It's called Packages from Planet X. It's on Disney XD, I think, in the States. And uh, it's going to be coming out on Teletoon in Canada. And uh, this was a part that I played like a long, long time ago. Like, almost four years ago, we did the pilot. And um, I was like, it was my first lead, lead guy part. And his voice is just like really excited the whole time. He's like, oh my gosh, everything's like crazy. And he's like, all oh, bonkers. And I was like, awesome, my first lead part, and I'm a crazy dude. And, uh, and then they actually got greenlit by Disney. And then we recorded the whole season um, last year. I almost lost the role because you have to audition again for the part that you helped make, which ah. is like, awesome. And then, you know. Uh, I, I, got, I got my third call back, and I was like, please, I just want my baby back. <laughs> baby back, baby back, ribs. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's coming out, or that's out on, in, in the States, and um, also a show called uh, Lolly Rock that I think is also another Disney show that stars Ashley Ball, Tabitha St. Germain, and what's that other girl's name? Who's the other person in that show? My gosh, she's gonna kill me. Kazumi Evans! Yeah. Oh, yes. Kazumi Evans, yeah. So they're the three princesses. And I play Mephisto. He's like the, the antagonist, along with my twin sister, Kelly Sheridan. So that's a really fun show. It's like, almost like a new age Sailor Moon. And uh, it's really fun. There's a lot of amazing kung fu fighting. Awesome. So there you go. Cool. How well, you, I, I'm, I'm, uh, 
fairly recently, we've wrapped up a whole whack of episodes of a thing called Maya the Bee, which Andrea Libman plays Maya, and I get to play her sidekick, Willie. So um, you can check that out. Um, pretty much just on YouTube, though, because I don't think it's airing in Canada right now. It airs in the States, I believe, but um, it's on there. It's out there. Get it, get it airing on a network. It's out there. <laughs> I, it's I, out I've there. noticed this. Vancouver seems to make a lot of our shows. They just don't watch them. Yeah, we don't watch our stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not really up to the, to the fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although we could write, you know, hey, by the way, network, blah, blah, blah. Can you hey. put this on? Yeah. Because we like this show on the YouTubes. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice if we could see it on the cable TVs. Oh, can uh, I plug one more thing? Do it. Oh, go ahead. You guys can keep watching. I don't know if you guys watch Ninjago at all. It's a, it's a Lego cartoon. I play the voice of uh, Kai. He's the red ninja. You guys can keep watching because I really love doing that show and I would love more seasons. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so uh, actually one, one more small question. I, uh, someone asked me this earlier. Uh, when you're doing Twilight songs, Rebecca, uh, do you actually also do the small incidental uh, Twilight lines, or does Tara still do those? No, Tara does those. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to really be good matchies, matchy match. <laughs> I, have to, I have to really sound like her, or if she interjects vo verbally in the middle of a song, it could sound weird. Word. <laughs> So uh, we are actually about halfway in right now, so I, I think we could probably start with the audience Q&A. Um, Screwball over here will be... Uh, um, ask uh, Screwball your questions first, um, and then uh, just come on up to the center mic here. Uh, so remember, um, you know, and I don't even know whether these guys are continuing work on Pony. Hopefully they are. Well, I would hope Rebecca is especially, uh, is, is Twilight Singer, but um, try to uh, avoid season four questions, um, despite uh, the little bit that um, Hasbro showed at Comic-Con. Um, and of course, you know, keep it, you know, uh, kosher. Um, and uh, also and another thing to point out. Yeah. Or 14. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure 12. of the Canadian um, uh, rating system. Um, but yes, and, and also they might not be completely aware of like all the crazy fan stuff. You know, there's, there's just so much of it out there. Ask like, away. I'm yeah. not even. <laughs> Ask away. Ask us anything. We will give you some sort of answer. All right, so my friend and I were actually talking a bit about, uh, is this good? Okay, there we go. My friend and I were actually asking about there is no villain song in Equestria Girls, and we were kind of sad about that. So we were wondering, would it have sounded too much like Twilight singing if Sunset Shimmer was singing? Like, would there have been a clash there? Or could you not get it with Daniel? Because I'm a sucker for villain songs. I know. It would have been good to have a villain song, totally. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think um, there would have been too much of a, a crossover sound, because I think whatever would, would have been written by them would have been farther enough, farther, far enough from the Twilight vibe, I, th I, would, I would trust that I w it would have been okay. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you very much. No, you're, you're welcome. Now that my question was stolen, thank you, Tony. <laughs> oh. uh, two questions, one for each of you. Um, just Vince, have you ever done a singing role? Like, have you ever had a chance to do singing for a character in a show or no? Uh, and if you haven't, would you like to? I did, I did a singing, I mean, I've sung a lot, I mean, I've done musicals my whole life, so I've like, do singing and dancing. He's uh, an amazing most, singer. <laughs> for most of my career. There you go. And, um, but I, I, I sang, let's see, I sang something for, like some pilots, and I sang, a, I sang a jingle, actually, with Ashley Ball. Ashley and I used to do a, a, a singing and dancing show choir together called Sound Sensation. Uh, but it was really cool to work with her after all these years that we didn't do that. But we, we did, sang a jingle for some real estate place in Toronto, and it was really cheesy and fun. And uh, I sang, oh, I sang, I sang for this new show. I think it's a YTV show for all you Canadian viewers. I think I can talk about this one. Um, called Nerds and Monsters. And um, yeah, so that's about it. And I just sing for fun in my shower. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, Rebecca. Um, I know it's going to be a hard question, I don't expect a good answer, um, but if you can, um, what is your favorite song that you've had to sing for Pony, if there is one? Oh, there's a lot of good songs. I really liked singing 
uh, morning in Ponyville. And also, and also My Big Brother. That was a lot of fun, too. Okay, but they're you. all really good songs, so mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to pick. But those are, those are kind of up there and the ones that kind of right. come back at me. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so uh, um, how does one go from being a regular actor to a voice actor? <laughs> <laughs> we are now unregular. Well, well, I mean, like... <laughs> Irregular? Irregular. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it, I get auditions for non-voice parts, and I don't get any voice part auditions, so how does one get voice auditions? Oh. Well, I, I, do, I do both. So I do TV and film as well as voice acting. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny because, uh, you know, you, I, just, I tell people I do a lot of cartoon voices, and I'm like, oh, cool, so you're a voice actor. I'm like, well, I'm an actor. I'm an actor that does voices as well. And it's like, it's funny because we sometimes overlook the fact that voice acting for cartoons, it, it requires a lot of good acting, you know? Because <laughs> um, there are some bad acting actors <laughs> and bad voice actors. On screen and off. Yeah, I mean, totally. But it requires, you know, some, some chops to do both, I think. And I, I, don't, I don't interchange, you know, the intention and, and the motivation for, for either or. It's just, I think, I, I think in cartoons, it's, it's just a lot more hyper. But as far as the business side of things, you might want to consider putting together a demo reel right. of all the different voices that you can do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't hurt if you can write it, you know, write a little sketch with all your different voices intermingling and chatting and sound yeah. effects and all that stuff and have that recorded okay. so that you have something to offer people to listen to, to say, this is my, this is an example of me doing voiceovers. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Hi, I have a question for both of you. Um, I'm in high school right now, and watching Equestrials, it being high school themed, it didn't, real, it didn't really feel quite right, but I was wondering if it reminded you of your high school experience. Hmm, that's a good question. In what way did it not feel right? Uh, well, I'm not from a big high school, but it felt like a lot more uh, crowded and rushed, so. Yeah, like all those, all those busy hallway scenes. Yeah, there was a lot of different colored people there. So it was like mine. <laughs> My high school was like that. It was good. I, it's a very colorful place. Very, very colorful. A lot of legs everywhere. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it was busy. You're right. It was very busy. But I think when, you're, when you put stuff on to, into animation, it's got to have some... some Crazy crowd energy. No, my, my high school was like that. Busy? We had so, yeah, it was lots busy, of, top, tons of people. Lots of locker, locker lots of hang, lockers, hangouts. Lots of shoving and pushing and colorful people. <laughs> so it was, great. Uh, was it normal not to attend class? Yeah, I was going to say, did they ever go to class? I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. At least Twilight didn't. Oh, no. She just spent they her just, time in the library. Yeah. But, you know, they have special classes where people can, you know, self-directed learning. Sure. Right? Maybe yeah. she's in a special program. <laughs> for for self-directed learners. Maybe. Okay, thank you. I don't have a question, but uh, these scarves were made by a friend of mine. who she, She's given the scarves to many of the other voice actors, and these are for you guys. Aww, oh, thank you. Gosh, so... That's so nice. Oh, wow. <gasps> Donuts. <You know. laughs> Woo. Oh, my gosh. I'm losing my mind right now. I know. This is and amazing. Holy cow. <laughs> Blue blood. One for every session. Flash century. <laughs> One for every session. <laughs> this is oh amazing. Gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Woo. Wow. Amazing. So keep, okay. That's gorgeous. And her, what's 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 all right, well, this one's on. Now I'm going to have to start talking like Sunset Shimmer. And now this one's on. She's going to be displeased about everything. I mean, it, it really is so chilly up and here in the north. Like, I'm from Seattle, and it's just so much different. Seattle is so different. You know what? Yeah. It's <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to pet Vincent. No, it's not. It's, I, you think Seattle's different? Uh, joking. <laughs> You know, you know, it's actually longer for me to get to the Vancouver and Washington than the Vancouver and Canada. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Hi. hey. Um, so nice simple question, I think. Um, so uh, what was it like breaking into voice acting? How'd you do it? And what was your first experience with that like? <laughs> well, okay, maybe not. I'm maybe a little complex. No, 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 I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Do you remember? Uh, my first experience in voice acting, I, uh, I auditioned for um, a fairy character uh, for, for some, something that was a ADR work, which is the dialogue replacement for a cartoon that's already been voiced in another country. So I auditioned for that, didn't get it. And then another studio called me and said, hey, do you want to come in and do some walla? And that's crowd noises and like chatting with the whole, you're in the room with a bunch of other actors and you get to like play the one, one minute you're playing the teenagers in the cafeteria, make, you know, chatting about like what class is next. And then the next minute you're like a bunch of zombies and <laughs> demons or something. It's awesome. So, so I got my start that way, kind of working my way up to getting roles and things like that. Yeah, um, I, I did a voice demo, you know, uh, back when I was in performing arts school. It was way too long. It was four minutes of, uh, I wrote a whole script though. I was pretty proud of the script. It was all these, um, it was called Fridge Freaks. It was all these different vegetables and condiments talking to each other inside a fridge. But it lasted way too long. I was bored with it too. Uh, but uh, I, I just shopped that around and I got a voice agent. And um, yeah, my first prelay cartoon was Sushi Pack and working with, uh, the likes of Sam Vincent, Tara Strong, um, I think Brian Dobson was in that, and um, Scott McNeil. So I was like in awe. Like the very, I remember, the, I don't know if it was like that for you, but when I first stepped in the studio, it was like Comedian City. Everyone was hilarious. Everyone was like doing different accents and like talking like, like always different, weird noises. And then everyone would join in and be like, oh, there's a Scottish person, there's an Indian person. My goodness. It was like crazy. And I was just like, I'm so scared right now. Uh, I felt the same way too. Yeah, yeah, when I did my first prelay and I and I was able to act with all these incredible actors like Trevor Duvall and Kathy mm -hmm. Westlick and Kathleen Barr and all those like yeah. do, uh, doing Kid versus Cat. And I was just yeah. like, what am I doing here? You guys are all so amazing. Mm -hmm. So I know. It, was, it was almost overwhelming, but at the same time, like a huge learning curve, big learning experience. Yes. And I tr had to try desperately not to laugh <laughs> in session. That's really hard when you've got really, really funny people around you not to go, because <clears throat> I'm one of those <laughs> laughers, like covering up and I'll laugh through my nose. Yes. Bad. Yes. We worked on Kid vs. Cat together. Yes, we did. You were funny. You were very funny. Well, we're yeah, that's a, that's a show that we that we have in common is Kid vs. Cat. Yes, yes. We <laughs> played a little boy. Thank you. No, he was a big boy. Thank you. Oh. He was a big boy. Yeah, Lauren's a pretty big kid. It's true. Uh, so before I forget, uh, do you guys have any like favorite lines as your characters? Um, I think mine was like, oh. My royal lips have tasted common carnival fare. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, God. What was my favorite Sunset Shimmer line? Where is this Twilight Sparkle? <laughs> yeah. You're evil. I'm so evil. <laughs> scary. That was Hello. so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, Rebecca, do you need some water? Do I need water? <laughs> oh, you don't have You're any. You're so very kind. That's so sweet of you. I know I should have shared. Sorry. I have my coffee. I'm <laughs> okay. fine. I'm all right. okay. Thank you. Uh, second of all, in the movie Equestria Girls, I believe it's Rarity that says uh, Flash Sentry used to be Sunset Shimmer's ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Was there any dialogue that you've recorded that may have been cut from the movie about mm -hmm. that relationship? No. Okay. No. Mm. Like the love scene? No, it's, no, no, it never happened. Don't talk about that. We, <laughs> said we won't talk about it anymore. Thank you. No, there wasn't anything that was cut. Hello. Hello. Hi. My question is about feelings. Uh, Vincent. Hi. Uh, how do you feel about what has been said that Flash Sentry is not going to continue in the main series? Uh, he was just in the movie. Uh, how do I feel about that? Um, I mean, it, it it is what it is, and then uh, you know, what can you do? I'm happy. I'm just happy to be a part of Equestria Girls to begin with. So, perfect. Um, yeah. And the other question is, uh, how do you feel about Tara Strong wishing that she could have your singing role? 
Oh, uh, does she did she say that? I've seen it, yes, several times <laughs> oh, on God, video. I didn't know that. But you know what? She is uh, super kind, and so um, I feel honored that she would say that. But she she's she's so so cool and so kind. So she's just flattering me. <laughs> she's blowing smoke. Thank you. CBC shirt. Yeah. yeah. Canada. Hello there. Hi. I, sorry, uh, so I have a, my question is, I guess uh, you're more recent players within the uh, voice acting field. And I guess uh, within the long history of the Canadian animation uh, industry, I was wondering uh, if you've had any influences or inspiration from others uh, in terms of uh, the different types of voice work that you do. Hmm. Inspirations. Well, my cousin Danny Mann is, uh, is an, an LA voice actor. He's my, like my dad's age, he's my first cousin once removed kind of thing, and he's done voice for a really long time, and he was sort of, he was sort of inspirational for me, because I didn't really know that you could do voice acting as a job. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, this is something that people do as a living, and I was, so I was inspired by that when I was a kid, and, uh, and still am, he's, he's amazing. He's on Pixar and stuff like that, he's crazy. Am I allowed to say that here? Sorry, Has <laughs> Sorry, Hasbro. Uh, <laughs> Pixar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, he did the the duck, um, Ferdinand the duck and Babe and stuff like that. So he's inspirational for me. Um, I used to watch cartoons as a kid. You know, Bobby's Bobby's World was my favorite cartoon, oh. and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I always wanted to be a cartoon character. I didn't know how you could do it until you know you figure out. Oh, there's actual industry here, and and uh, just was like obsessed with doing Simpson voices as a kid, and and um, and then mimicking different people. And you know, actually, I fooled a, pe a lot of people before. You know, talking like this, and uh, they don't know. You know, I say I'm from Hong Kong, and I just come here today to uh, <laughs> to see you. It's a good, it's a good thing. And then you know, trip them out afterwards. Uh, <laughs> speaking English, but. Um, you know, I, when I was doing uh, Sushi Pack, it was really cool to work with um, a lot of these cool people, you know, great, great talented voice actors. And Sam Vincent is a person that I really look up to, and, and um, I watched a lot of his stuff, you know, like Stormhawks and Robots, and, and just to see what, wh why is he so marketable? Why is he so talented? And so, you know, it's like sort of just mimicking, mimicking the people that you admire and, and taking a little bit of that and then putting your own spin on it, you know? Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, Sam Vincent, like, he was part of the Flim Flam Brothers and did that song. Yes. So just to do that, like, you're up there. He's talented. Hi. Um, this is a question for both of you. Um, I'm wondering what's your, overall, your entire career, what's your favorite character that you've done? And then the least favorite character, or if you don't have one, the hardest character to do? <sighs> um, character. Wow, this is well. Honestly, like I said before, this uh, uh, Daniel um, Dan Dombrowski from Packages from Planet X was is my baby. He reminds me of, of of Bobby from Bobby's World. Crazy imagination, super fun, and it's a fun, fun cartoon. And and uh, that was that was a part that I really, really enjoyed. Okay, but also Prince Blue Blood because <laughs> he's hilarious. Yeah. He's so full of himself. Full of himself. Um, I think uh, my favorite character, because uh, the cast was so much fun, was, uh, was Kid vs. Cat. Um, I played a character named Lauren. We were just talking about that earlier, and that's um, where I got to play this sort of like 11-year-old boy who is not terribly bright, but, <laughs> but enthusiastic, extremely enthusiastic. And that was probably one of, the, one of the best and one of the hardest characters I've had to, had to play, too. So I wouldn't great. say the worst, but... Um, I didn't know it was you, actually, because I was watching the show, and I was like, who's that? Who's that little boy? Who is that? It's Rebecca. I, I actually watched a, a, an episode recently, because it's still airing on, on YTV, and I recorded on my PVR. And I watched it, and I said, I sound like a man. <laughs> I sound like a man. And I was very proud of myself. <laughs> that was there an awesome thing. I, I, nice. I played Kathy. Kathy was played Dennis. Yeah. Ki yeah, and I played his dad. And uh, so funny. That audition was hilarious because he's apparently Asian. <laughs> apparently. And so uh, you know, at first they're like, "Oh, we want an Asian accent. Can you do an Asian accent?" I'm like, "Yeah." So uh, you know, talk like this and stuff like that. And they're like, mm, "Can you make it bigger?" I'm like, 
Okay, like this. Like, yeah, yeah, can you do even better? I said, okay, so all my lines are just yelling like this. It was like awesome. He's yelling over the fence. He's yeah, over. every time I was just like yelling my face off. <laughs> and he had a, his catchphrase was, um, ha, up your face. <laughs> <laughs> It was a funny script, too. Yeah, it was but, hilarious. It was a fun show. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. One of the reasons I was like this in the <laughs> session the whole time. Nice. Hi, so uh, my question is, uh, do you prefer playing like the good guy or like the villain? Oh, that's mm. a really good question. It depends. If the good guy is uh, has a lot of flaws, mm -hmm. then it's more fun to play a good guy. But if the bad guy is, uh, it, all the flaws are just out there. <laughs> So it's, I mean, it's more, I, I have more fun playing the flaws because that was, that's what makes us colorful is, is uh, I don't know, different highs and lows of personality. Mm. Um, I played uh, the Mandarin in Iron Man Armored Adventures. Woo! One person <laughs> watched it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> thanks, Mom. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, no, that was, I love playing, playing the evil guy. That was really, really fun. I think, I don't know, I, th I just think they have much more of a struggle, like you were saying, the flaws mm -hmm. and, 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 and a journey, an arc. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hey, Vincent, um, I was going to ask you first, um, did, did you ever catch the fact that people like to call Flash Sentry a Brad before the movie began? I, I heard a lot about it on YouTube. Yeah, I did catch that. I did catch that. I mean, I was like, you know, I was really, you know, psyched to come to Brony, Brony Can, so I was doing a lot of research. Trust me, I was watching a lot of MLP. But yes, I did catch that. And oh. I was like, my name ain't Brad. So, I gotta find out that other name. I gotta find uh, out that other okay. name. Okay. So, um, yeah, people say that Flash Center won't. I've heard that people say Flash Center won't appear like beyond the movie. But do you think um, he may pop up again if Hasbro decides, uh, okay, we need a good mark saying, oh, well, well, we'll bring back that Flash Center guy. And we'll, we'll put him in like this, the fifth season. Oh, and there, there's our next toy line right there. <laughs> I, I, I am surprised, you know, with the line of dolls that they just came out with. There's no Brad doll. <laughs> it, it, it is uh, rather surprising to me, Flash at least. Flash Century. Yeah. First or no? Yeah, they should, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, I, I do what I'm told, basically. <laughs> oh, okay. I go in and do it. And, and, you know, if they bring them back, that'd be awesome. If they don't, that's all right. I had, had a fun run. Okay. But, uh, yeah. I, I do know that there's supposed to be a comic in the fall, uh, actually, with maybe a little bit more of the backstory of cool. Quest Three Girls. Cool. Very cool. So I don't know what they might try and do with it in the future. but Maybe I can read comics on the street. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, want, I, I'll, it's I'll, like a I'll busking. Thing. Yeah, it's a busking thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, Put a I'll, guitar case. Oh <laughs> uh, wait. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, Rebecca. Uh, I'm a little confused. Um, some people have pointed out that Sunset Shimmer has like sort of strange intentions in the movie. Um, like, okay, we need. Okay, we're gonna need to wreck the fall por uh, fall formal. Okay, so tells you you get you get it onto that. But then she says later after that musical number where they're cleaning up. Next time, show a little restraint. So like. Okay, do you need them to destroy it, or do you need them not to destroy it? Because, like she says, I need this thing to go up without a hitch. So, like, that's, like, rather confusing. Well, that's a good question. Um, I think that, because uh, I'm not a writer, A, eh? I'm not a writer, so I didn't write the script, so I don't know, um, I don't know the intention, the intention there behind that, but uh, I think she... She may have, she may have uh, masterminded the whole thing, the destruction and then the remounting. I think she just knew it was all going to happen that way. Oh, okay. I was just She's a bit evil. confused. It's like, it's like evil mastermind. Like, it's like, yeah, I was just, it's just a bit confusing when she says, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to need you guys to wreck it so Twilight can't get the ground. And then later it's like, oh, wait, you guys should show, you should show us some restraint next time I ask you to wreck something. I think she changes her mind, to be honest. She changes her mind partway through because she knew her first part was foiled. Oh, so it's like her mind works kind of like Wheel of Fortune. We're going to spin the wheel and see what I come up with next. <laughs> okay, Maybe I'm like, I good. just changed my mind. I don't know. <laughs> so. Okay, so I wanted to ask if... Um, you had any warning about the Brony fandom, or if your emails just like exploded one day, and uh, first impressions of the Brony community, and maybe impressions now? I, I was very, um, 
surprised to see that there was such a huge fandom that, uh, you know, followers for, for bronies. And, you know, I'm Googling all this stuff and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. There's so many people that are into this show. And, and then, you know, I saw, I saw Andrea and Tabitha and all these people going off to different places and meeting all these cool people. I'm like, I really want to do this. So I told my agent, I'm like, can you get me on one of these conventions? And then, and then so the word was sort of out there. And then actually, my very first interaction was with Dusty Cat and Screwball. And so I'll, I'm very, very happy to finally meet you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we had a really fun, um, fun interview on the Everfree Network. And uh, say brony, my friends. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I love, I love it. It's so great. And like, everyone is just so welcoming and generous and supportive. Um, you know, I just love the fact that it's, it's really about positivity and love and, and, yeah, love, basically the most important thing in life. So, yeah. And my whole world opened up when I started doing Twitter and realized that a lot of the Brony com community communicates through Twitter and that um, it's, it's so... Um, it is a community, and you guys have created a really wonderful, supportive group where you are friends with people from different countries all around the world. It feels like a really close-knit global community, and uh, and I love the way that everybody supports each other's art and supports each other's um, growth, and um, and that you guys made friends and you you actually get to see your friends at cons, which I think is kind of fun too. Mm -hmm. So um, the, my experience coming here for the first time has been amazing. Everybody's taking such great care of me and making sure I'm feeling comfortable and safe and, and having fun and I'm feeling the love. It's, it's like, there's so much, there's so much. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. No, but uh, it's really beautiful. There's a lot of, a lot, a strong, such a strong sense of community that I really, really enjoy, supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we just have a little bit of time left. So if you guys wanted to say anything or sing anything. <laughs> sing something, Rebecca. Like what I had for breakfast. I don't know. <laughs> um, could always give you lyrics. Give me lyrics. Sunset Shimmer and Brad Duet. Wow, this is a lot of pressure. It really is. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Rap battle. Yo, sunset, why are you just so mean? <laughs> Maybe it's because you dumped me. <laughs> That's true, but there's this new girl that came into school. <laughs> Her name is Twilight. <laughs> I know, and it totally drives me crazy. Okay, that was a pretty yeah. good note. Okay. I can't hit that. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna get We're, sued for this? Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. I, I it's am, all being documented by many <laughs> video cameras at this time. I, I think by the end of the weekend, it's gonna be animated fully. Oh like, check back. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere online. We're so fired. We're totally fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently Flash isn't coming back, so I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. fired. Uh, so these guys will be back tomorrow for our um, panel with lots and lots of VAs. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy the con, and uh, well, we'll be seeing you soon. And hopefully you guys enjoy the con. Yeah. Yes, Have fun, please. you guys. Nice right, to thanks, see you guys. all out. I love the costumes. I love your costumes. <laughs> So here we are with Vincent Tong. This is his very first convention. Mys know him best as Blue Blood, as Pony Joe, and the amazing and handsome Flash Sentry. <laughs> and Garble. And Garble, yes, yeah. and Garble. Yeah. So how are you enjoying yourself? I'm enjoying myself a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Lots of people over here, lots of good looking folk. You well, know, talking every to me and giving me bro hoofs and everything. I'm very excited. Oh. Boom, that's my first one. My first one. I'm very excited. I'm privileged. I'm privileged, Screwball. I'm privileged. Because you were like one of my first brony friends you know, that talked to me. So. Oh, thank very you. Very happy, man. Oh, I'm super happy. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that we finally have a convention. Very yeah. first convention in Canada. Yes. And your hometown, so can't go wrong. Vancouver, BC. It's the most beautiful place to be. So you know. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And 
I'm 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 for all, all out words. I really am. Are you excited? I know your your flight got delayed. It got delayed. It was a tragedy, but I managed to make it. Yeah. Thank goodness. Good. Thank goodness. Good. And, and your bed's fine. The, the washrooms work. So good. Good. It's it's a very very lovely hotel. I've been having a blast. Nice parties. Yes. Ragers, Parties. Throwing <laughs> furniture out the window. <laughs> no, not like, not like not that. Not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Yet. Watch out. People who are standing below his room. Yep. He might throw stuff. <laughs> He's dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. <laughs> well, the, the, this is, again, Vincent. And I catch more because this is going to be an amazing convention. I think so. Yes. All right. Definitely. Peace and love. Peace. Hey everyone, uh, Jack Zhang, EFN camera mayor for Brony Can. I do apologize for um, some of the camera work coming up uh, in this panel because um, we were in a time rush. Uh, the panel started uh, without warning. We couldn't get a good angle and uh, we messed up. So please forgive us and here is Rebecca and Vincent. Um, I'd like to welcome up uh, Rebecca Shoycat, <laughs> who is, of course, um, not only Sunset Shimmer from Equestria Girls, but also the singing voice of Twilight Sparkle over everything. And we also have Vincent Tong, who's played a number of season one characters. Uh, you've got Prince Blue Blood, you've got uh, Pony Joe, also Donut Joe, um, and you've also got Flash Sentry from Equestria Girls. <gasps> Ooh, ah. Uh. He used to be my boyfriend. <laughs> Until you dumped me for that Twilight. Sorry. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Oh, should I, sorry, I should say every pony. I'm new. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How come Rebecca's mic is so much louder than mine? I'm projecting. Oh, there. No. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, um, how many of you is this your first convention? And oh, okay. So probably the same for my first character was was uh, Prince Blue Blood, and I was like, whoa, my little pony is still going on because I used to. <laughs> watch it as a kid. Well, not my sister did. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I did, I did as well. But uh, yeah, so I did Prince Blue Blood, which was a super fun character to do, and um, which was really great, because it was just like me and all these other female voice actors. I was like, wow, this show is amazing. And they were, they're very talented. They're very talented, that's why. And, uh, and um, yeah, and then I did a couple of other characters. Uh, I think I did Garble the Dragon, maybe next. And uh, that was over an MP3 audition that I sent in from my house. And at first she was like, he talked like this. And then I think by the time we got into the studio, it was more like kind of like a teenage voice. And then I think they even morphed it a bit more because I was uh, sounding too much. Garble was voice. the red one, right? He was the red one, yes. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then I did po Pony Joe or Donut Joe, and I didn't even know I did that voice because he was sort of like a sparse one that they threw at me, and I didn't recall that until someone on Twitter was like, did you do this voice? I'm like, yeah, I think that's me. I think I, think I did. I yeah. think I did. Awesome. And Flash was fun. Flash was funny because it, uh, it was written. He's totally just you. He's written. I, I, no. somebody, somebody followed you around and wrote a script. <laughs> no. He, it was weird because the, the breakdown of the character was Flash Sentry. He's this really cool, um, really reserved, introverted, more of like a poet. So I sort of went in like that, kind of like a goth emo kind of kid. And they're like trying to get something out of me. And I'm Pony conventions. Uh, OK, so I have a couple random questions for these guys. And then what we're going to do is just open it up to audience questions. So um, anything you ask, as long as it's you know reasonable, and I'll go over all of that stuff later. Um, so first of all, I guess, how was your trip all the way to Vancouver? <laughs> Tiring. I'm exhausted. I live in Richmond. <laughs> Uh, so, as some of you may know, um, Studio DHX, which produces the show, as well as a lot of the VAs, are currently residing here. So, it's very convenient to get some of them for this convention. And uh, as I mentioned, these two, this is their first con, so, so please um, welcome, their, uh, welcome them kindly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so now for the ridiculously boring questions that everyone gets asked at the start. Um, so uh, I guess what I want uh, to start off with is how did you make it into MLP? Mm. I was actually doing some, uh, some demo singing for Daniel on the musicians union side of things. Sorry, I'll lean in because it sounds like I might be feeding back a bit. Um, so I, I started doing the singing, um, just singing some of the, the songs because I'm a singer around town and uh, Daniel brought me in to do some, some demo stuff for things like Martha Speaks. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show. And uh, yeah, so then I, then I got a job kind of out of that. It's kind of like auditioning. Mm -hmm. um, I there's a lot of pressure <laughs> being a princess, but um, but I get to be her nemesis too, so it's kind of like yeah. So I mean, you actually played a really big role with the movie, you know, as far as like singing and doing uh, the antagonist role. That was really fun, but I was thinking like, uh oh, I hope Sunset Shimmer doesn't end up sounding like Twilight <laughs> at all, because that would suck. Yeah, it's 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 nice because like they finally gave you an actual like character in the show. Like you had been singing all this time, and yeah. everyone else seemed like to pick up this random thing or that random thing. But I was wondering, you know, when oh, when you'd get like sort of a shot, and then you were kind of like the big antagonist of this movie. So yeah, I was pretty surprised at how you know huge huge that character was in the movie. So it was it was exciting, but um, yeah, it was a lot of work too. You know, it's hard work being mean. <laughs> you have to pull it out from your darkest places, and it's actually... You're very yeah. scary in the movie. Very, so very you know not never to cross me, right? It's true. So. Well, I'll, I, do, I don't cross you in real life. But you freaked me out in the movie. It it's a scary character, me. yeah. She, she. By the end of it, it was very, very scary. Oh, God, ripping, like... My vocal cords out. <laughs> <laughs> was, she got pretty. She got really demony at the mm. end. So she was really scary. And when I saw the movie, oh my god, I was terrified. <laughs> like grabbing <laughs> Kathy West, like ah! <laughs> God, I'm like slobbering and everything. <laughs> I, I know some people were worried about the kids. <laughs> you know, I, I was that. concerned. I have two two little girls, and I was concerned about whether I should actually show the movie to them. But they're tough as nail. Oh my. I know he's cooler than that. I'm like, I'm trying to be as cool as I can. <laughs> and then I just was like, oh, I did it. And I remember running into you. You were on your bike yeah. with your little one. Yeah. And I was like, how was your audition? You're like, I think, oh, yeah. I, think I, I, I said, I think. You're I, just going to like, I think you were going to your audition or something. I was going to my audition. Yeah. for It was for Sunset Shimmer. Yeah, and I, I was I going to finished. my audition for Sunset Shimmer, and he just finished his audition for yeah. Flash Sentry. And I was like, yeah, I'm never going to get cast in that show. And that's what I much. said, too. So, so like, that was, <laughs> I'd written it off. I thought, no, I'm not, I haven't been in the series. I'm not going to make this role, whatever, you know. No, here we are. And here we are. Yay! Very happy. <laughs> I got cast! Yes! So how many of you have seen the movie? Awesome. Wonderful. That's okay, great. so yeah, we can awesome. talk in spoiler and <laughs> everything. No spoiler alerts. Good. Okay, so um, you know, so this is your first con, and what's your initial reaction to kind of everyone and like the the feel of what's going on here? I know it's like you want like the first panel pretty much, so it's it's sort oh, of the, hard to. This is awesome. I, I love the uh, I love the energy. Um, every everybody who's shown up, it's so cool. I like that it's all ages and lots of stuffies, <laughs> lots of huggable things. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just getting started, so I'm looking forward to a fun weekend. Me too. Same. You guys are cool. And I'm happy I'm here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's 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 see what I've got here, um, Rebecca. So how's it feel being a princess? Um, it's nerve-wracking, to be honest. 